in Mecca where he was born, he was known as Al-Amin, the most trustworthy. And Al-Amin, even though his enemies had stole from his followers, killed his followers, tortured his followers, confiscated their properties, he could have done what others do in warfare. He could have then confiscated their wealth that he was holding. But when they entered his home to kill him, they did not find him there. Instead, they found his cousin Ali, radiallahu anhu. And he left Ali in his house when he escaped for only one reason, so that Ali radiallahu an could give back to them the valuables, the money that they had entrusted with him years ago. Can you imagine a man who is hated for his message, opposed for his message, sought to be killed, yet those people who hated the message and sought to kill him they never thought to come and say, give us back our money. Because still they trusted him. Because they knew there was no one with more trust in Mecca than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never drank alcohol throughout his life. Although alcohol drinking was just as common in that day as it is today. The Prophet ﷺ never used any kind of intoxicant. And although the drugs that are used today were not known in his time, they had their own types of drugs. The Prophet ﷺ, before he was commissioned as a prophet and messenger, he never touched alcohol or drugs. He never committed fornication or adultery. In fact, he sallallahu alayhi wa never looked upon a naked woman ever in his life. He never looked upon any woman with lust in his entire life. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never in his life did he ever lift his hand to hit any human being, ever? Not a servant, not a wife, not a child, not a friend, nor an enemy, except when that enemy was opposing Allah and opposing the message. Then the Prophet Wasallam turned into a tiger, into a lion, and he executed the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in defending this faith. And he transformed from someone that the companions and the people said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was as gentle, he was as shy as a virgin on her wedding night, hiding behind a curtain. He was that kind of man. He was that pious, he was that shy, he was that gentle in his speech. Yet, it was said that when the Prophet wasalam, was met on a battlefield, he was ferocious in defending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the companions of the Prophet wasalam, used to look for him on the battlefield, they said, Wallahi, we found him in the middle of the enemies, fighting. And they said, we used to seek the protection of his person. We used to hide behind the Prophet wasalam, on the battlefield. He was such a warrior and statesman on the battlefield, commanding and fighting for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once he was off the battlefield, his eyes were downcast and he was speaking softly and he was gentle and he was warm and he was sacred and soft and caring and crying. 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never, he never wore silk. He never wore gold. He never dressed arrogantly. He never dressed ostentatiously. He never walked proud, arrogant. He never appeared in front of people like he was a king or an emperor, even when he was the absolute ruler. One could enter a hall like this and the Prophet Sallallahu could be sitting among his companions as you are sitting. And it was common for people to look around and want to think he should be sitting up someplace in a chair on a throne like other leaders. He should be wearing some gown of gold. He should be wearing some kind of crown. He should be a man with people around him serving him. But when they came in and they looked around, it was a common question. Who is Muhammad? Where is he? No one could tell who was the Prophet وسلم, among his followers because his clothes and what he ate and where he chose to sit was never different from the other people. You tell me, name one leader in the world that could compare with that. The Prophet وسلم, never lied. He never lied to his enemies and he said, the only deception that we have a right to do is during war. He said war is deception, but it didn't mean lying to his enemy. No, it meant not giving the enemy information that could be used logistically against us. But the Prophet Sallallahu never lied. He never deceived. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an. Abu Huraira radiallahu an. All of those, Zayd ibn Harith radiallahu an. All of those who served the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who served him, they said in his entire life, he never said to us, oof. When we did something, he never said, oof. No, he always was gentle. And he was always generous. And when someone asked him for something, he gave everything to them, never caring about himself. And the Prophet وسلم, he used to sleep on a mat, like that mat on the floor. Only thing it was made from palm fiber, from dried grass. And that's how he slept on a dirt floor with no furniture in his house. And one day, Umar ibn al-Khattab entered the house of the Prophet وسلم, and saw that he was sleeping on the dirt floor. And Umar, he said, Ya Rasulullah, the kings, the emperors in the earth, in Persia, in Byzantium, in Habash, all over the world, these kings, they are not like you. Oh, Rasulullah, you can have better than this. And the Prophet dismissed him and said, they have what they have been given, and I have what I have been given. This was a man receiving over the period of 23 years on a daily basis, intermittently, he was receiving the 6,626 verses of the Quran over a period of 23 years, receiving the revelation. And when it came, they said, his body shook, his body shook. And if someone's hand or leg was under his, it felt as if their hand or their leg was being crushed from the revelation coming down. And the Prophet وسلم, sweated and his body shivered so that the fools among the unbelievers said he had epilepsy because they could not explain what was happening to this man. I told you earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said had he sent this Quran down on a mountain, it would have crushed a mountain. So what do you think it would have done to the heart of a human being? 
but Allah prepared the Prophet وسلم, as a vessel for it. But when the revelation came down, they could see it. Yet the Prophet وسلم, was also during the course of that day feeding the poor, visiting the sick, discharging the army, acting as a statesman, acting as an arbiter, talking to the people, addressing the women, giving out the zakat, sewing his clothes, washing his house, shopping for the food, doing all the things that you and I do, and at night standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time, and in the day fighting the battles, discharging the armies, giving the ahkam and the rulings, explaining the Quran, instructing the people in behavior. How could a man do all of that and stand four or five hours at night at one time? The Prophet وسلم, on one occasion, he went to a place called Ta'if to give his message to those people. Ta'if is a high place, maybe 60 miles, 50 miles from Mecca, and he walked there. And when he arrived there, the nobles of that city sent out the meaner elements, some urchins and bums and destitute people to throw rocks at the prophet and spit at him. And he bled and he cried and he sat down on the stump of a tree or on a rock and he was questioning himself why I was not successful in talking to these people. What is it that I'm doing? I'm inefficient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to say to him, Oh Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Salam alayk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you, Salamu alaykum Muhammad. And he has ordered me to command the angels of the mountains on the two sides of these people to come together like that and crush those people if you want. The Prophet وسلم, said, no, I don't want that. Let them go. Maybe one day they will be Muslims. Today, Taif is one of the most beautiful places where the flowers grow, where there are no flowers anywhere else. And everyone in Taif today is Muslim. This was the manner of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Think about this kind of man. Have you heard of such a man? Have you ever seen such a man? Have you read about such a man? Never. You cannot even imagine this kind of man. 